bless you. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with me, Galatians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. If you know the Bible, you know there was 400 years of silence between the Testament, we know as the intertestament period where there was no word of God or no authentic word of God, no revelatory word of God. God kind of went silent between that time. It was an all-time low in the, in the nation of Israel. Um, there was different um, nations that took conquest, but finally Rome would become the, the greater nation that would rule the known world and when we see the events of the coming of the birth of Christ unfold we I think we just skim over the surface of it and we don't really get down into it because the birth of Christ it happened in in such a a, um, manner it was such humble situation that we find ourselves in in this particular story of the birth of Christ. But there was a time set before the foundations of the world for Christ to be born. If he had been born in any other era of time or any other moment in history, the coming of the Lord would have been a sure fail. God seen a precise moment and a precise time that he would send his son into this world. In Galatians, uh, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, it says, but when the fullness of time had come. The fullness of time had come. See, time wasn't full at that moment. There was emptiness in time. It had been emptied from the fall of Adam. It had been empty down through the Old Testament, through the, the oracles and, and the work of the priesthood. Because Israel would come to the Lord, fail God, come back to the Lord, fail God, come to the Lord and turn their back on God over and over and over again. And humanity was lost. Humanity um, under the law could not keep the law. The Old Testament could not make the oncomer perfect. There had to be a New Testament. There had to be a time when God would um, bring grace into the world. There had to be a time that God would write his word, not on the tablets of stone, but the tablets of our heart. So the fullness of time had come. God sent forth his son, born of a woman. And in the journey of our minds, we can go back to that dark night far away in, in outside of Bethlehem when Jesus was born. Can you only imagine the things and the sights and the sounds that were heard as the angels begin to proclaim that announcement? As the shepherds watched on, as they heard the good news of what Israel had expected for such a long time, he had arrived. And the angels announced the Redeemer, the world so desperately needed, had come into the world. And the angel comes and announced the expectations had now been realized because the fullness of time had come. It was the moment. The Bible says the Lamb of God slain before the foundations of the world. The Bible tells us in Genesis 3 that the the seed of the woman would crush the serpent's head. God promised through the through the uh, prophets that uh, in Isaiah, behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. And uh, the governments of the world will be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. He would be the one that would redeem his people from their sins, and not only his people, but he would redeem the world of their sins because we needed a savior and there was none not one 
Bible says recorded in the book of Revelations that were found. And behold, the Bible says, says the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. And the Bible says there was weeping throughout heaven because Jesus said he would go. He would bring that redemption that humanity needed. He would restore our right standing with God. He'd bring us back in right relationship with God. And they, the angels of the Lord said, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born in you down in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Can you imagine that it got so good that a choir of angels took their place in celestial choir, stand aloft in the clouds? You know, the midnight sky became its noonday because heaven couldn't contain it anymore. They couldn't contain the joy and the jubilation of the coming of the birth of Christ. Because they knew this was the moment they'd been waiting for throughout all history. The moment to declare that Jesus was coming to this world. He was coming uh, not as a lot of people seen him as a militant man, as a religious man, as, 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 a, <clears throat> as a conqueror coming. And that's how they missed Christ. Because they didn't think he would be born in an animal stable or a stall in such a lowly and a meek fashion. So a lot of times I believe we miss Christ during Christmas. The Bible says the innkeeper, when they came to and said they needed a place for the baby to be born, they said we have no room in the inn. We have no room for him. So he missed Jesus. So they went, he said, I have an animal stall, an old place where, where I keep my livestock. You can go out there. That's the only thing I have left. And I believe a lot of times we miss the Christ of Christmas because we're really not looking for him. We're really not looking for his glory. We're really not look, looking for him. I, I believe at Christmas time we look for a lot of things. We look, we, we look to give presents. We look to receive presents. We look for, for, for all the things that happens, the celebrations that happen during uh, this time of year. But do we really look for Jesus? Do we really look for the Lord? If we go into the story in um, Luke, you'll find uh, the things that happened to Mary. She was just a average, normal, village young lady. Some say she was 14. Some say she was 15. Uh, I, I'm not sure. That's what some, some theologians say. Uh, have talked about but God is fixing to put a very big demand upon her he's fixing to give her a word that's going to alter her life forever it's going to change her life forever see life is full of disruptions how many believe that this morning the disruptive nature of Jesus Christ is not often talked about but the truth of the matter is if we walk with God We'll find out that sometime in our life that God is going to disrupt our lives. I don't think people talk about it much because it's not a really a shouting point. It's because people don't like to get their life disrupted. We want to do our thing. We, 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 we want to live our life. And we don't want God interrupting our life. We don't want him giving us a word or giving us a, a, a call or giving us a, a work to do. Because it has to disrupt our whole life, the way we're used to doing the, the, the things that we do. It changes our routine. It changes everything. But see, we don't understand in, in, in Mary's Christmas that the, the word that the angel of the Lord is fixed to proclaim to her, it is such a powerful word. It is going to disrupt her life. But see, when you go back in Jewish history, as a child, a male and a female is betrothed. They are already uh, engaged as a child. They already know who they're going to marry. So as, as, a, as a young Jewish woman, they wait all their life for that moment. It all builds up. It all culminates for the celebration that would go on uh, for weeks and weeks at a time during the engagement, during, during the time before the marriage. And Mary had waited all her life for the but now God's fixing to change her plans. So a lot of times we think we waited all our life for one thing or another, 
and, and, and we've got life planned out, and we've already set our goals to do something, and then all of a sudden God set, steps in and says, hey, i got something for you to do, and it's not what you're thinking. It's not what you've imagined. But that means you know when God steps in and says something over our life or gives us a word that is greater than anything we can even think or imagine of what things he's going to do in our lives. That's, that's somebody to say amen right there. When God comes in and gives us a word that's going to alter and change our life, it's not for our bad, but it's for our better. And sometimes we don't want to hear that word. Sometimes we don't want to listen to what God is saying. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And uh, we, let, we make our plans to come together just as we plan them. We organize a certain way. And, and like we might say, when I turn 21, I'm going to do this. When I'm 30, I'm going to do this. And when I'm 40, I'm going to do this. And then comes God. See, God can disrupt your whole life. Abraham was an old man. And God said, hey, get up and leave all your family, your friends, everybody you know, everything from near. Leave the land, the earth, child, Eve. I'm going to take you to a place that I'm going to show you. So in obedience, he leaves out. He said, because there is the place I'm going to command the blessing on you. I'm going to make you a father of all nations. So he obeyed the word, and he found out that the blessing comes when we obey the word of God. If you want to tell God a joke, tell him what you're planning right now. Because God is disrupted by nature, you have to be willing to allow him to come in and tear up everything you planned in life. See, when I was a young man, my plans were graduate high school, go to college four years or six or five or six years or whatever, and I was going to do this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden my whole life gets turned upside down. I'm 17 years old. My wife is 16 years old. She's with a child. We get married, very young age. But see, God disrupts your life for a reason. And the next thing you know, I'm at home watching uh, preachers on TV and my wife's attending church. And little did she know, I was at home and God was dealing with me. They was praying for me at the church. I didn't know it. But God's prayer, those prayers were being heard because God began to disrupt my life and began to show me that I everything that I thought that I needed and everything that... All, all, all the things that I was doing at that particular time, it was worthless. It was in vain. But what I really needed the most was him. So I would sit home and cry and watch uh, preachers on television. I wouldn't go to church. I was hard-headed. I was stubborn. And tears would run down my face. And I'd hear her coming and I'd dry my eyes. I didn't want her to see it. And not long after that, one night, we was all sound asleep. And God gave me a dream. I seen Jesus walking on the water. And he beckoned me to come. And it was about waist deep. And I walked out to where he was. And he took me and he submerged me. He baptized me and took me back up. And then the, and then the dream changed. And I was on an island out in the depth out in, the, out in the middle of the ocean or sea somewhere and there was a storm just rocking and blowing and blasting and I seen Jesus come to me he said come unto me all you labor and heavy laden I'll give you rest come learn to me for I'm meek and lowly heart shall find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light he said peace be still and everything was calm and I woke up from the dream and I looked around our home and I didn't wake my wife up, but there was such a mighty presence of God in that room that I could literally see it. And I started walking out of our bedroom into our living room where our sofa was, and every step I would take, my knees were buckling, 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 because I felt the weight of the sin in my life. I, I felt the weight and the burden of that, that everything that I had done in life, it was on me. And I fell to my knees, and I began to cry out to the Lord. I said, God, 
I am unhappy. Lord, I need you. Can Will you please save my soul? Will you please help me, Lord? Because I was much old. I, I, you know, I thought I could do life on my own. I thought I was self-sufficient. I thought I didn't need anybody. I could do all this by myself. You know what? I couldn't do it all by myself. And at that moment, I, when I asked him, I repented of my sins. I was serious. I was meaning business with God. He came in. The Spirit of the Lord came in my heart and my life. And, and, and salvation came. And there was a new birth that came in, into my life. But see, God disrupted my life because I had already planned my life out. And God said, no, you're not going to do it that way. You're going to have to do it my way. And that's where we come to the point where we have to say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done, Father. See, a lot of times we don't want to submit ourselves to God, but that, you know what? As long as you never submit yourself to God, your, your life is never going to be fruitful. You're never going to have happiness. You're never going to have contentment. It's when we submit ourselves fully to God's plan. And we're going to find out in this story how Mary submits herself to the plan of God. Now, some of us come and learn this early in life. We submit ourselves to Christ, but some of us struggle and determine and do things our own way. We don't see the light until we 20, 30, 40, 50 on down the road somewhere. Then there's some uh, hard co uh, cord, stubborn people that keep doing the same thing over and over, and, and they see the same results, and there's no change. And we don't catch on to later in life. And some people wait till they're on the ventilator, gasping for breath. And finally they realize that God's plan was better than their own. How many believe today God's plan is better than my plan for my life? But those of us here today, have, I hope everyone has you've surrendered yourself to the will of God. and I will trust Him. How many people are trusting the Lord this morning? I just want to take a few moments to talk to you about that trust, that faith, and ultimately that favor because... This story of Mary's miraculous conception is in, in the Christmas uh, story. We find out that Mary is a young girl and she's waited all her life, all her life. She's been betrothed to Joseph. They both of the, the Davidic uh, uh, lineage of, of King David. They both of the lineage of Christ. And they both of the house of David. And she's waited all her life. For this moment when she's going to marry this man that she's been betrothed to even as a child. And there was uh, a whole lot different about doing marriage than um, we do it today. During their engagement was almost as powerful as marriage itself when they got engaged, when they was betrothed. So if you did anything to disrupt that engagement, you had to legally get a bill of a a divorce and it was embarrassed to the family but Mary wasn't worried about that because she knew she had kept herself pure all of her life and everything was going according to plan and then there comes God she's just going down the road saying I want the bride maids to wear pink and I don't know if I'm going to let my sister be the maid of honor I don't I, there's going to be trouble in the family she's a uh, good has had a good set of problems trying to figure out the best place to be married. All these things are coming into place. Then we need to look in the Bible at the word I want to share to you today in Luke chapter 1, verse number 28 is my subject. If you have your Bible, look there with me for one minute. Luke chapter 1, verse number 28. Let's go back to verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God in the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin that spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. Mary was already betrothed. She was already uh, engaged to be married to Joseph it was about that time they were both of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and the angel came in unto her he came into her house he said hail thou art highly favored and the Lord is with thee blessing 
Blessed art thou among women, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. She was troubled at what he was telling her. And the angel said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with, with God. How many are thankful for favor today? How many are thankful for God's grace on your life? Even though your life's been wrecked, even though you've been at the bottom, even though your life's been turned upside down by your decisions or, or by default, whatever it may be in life, how many know that God's grace covers all, hallelujah, all the failures, all the mistakes, all the shortcomings, all the times that you said no to God, all, all the times you've turned your back on God. Grace covers all. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. To fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be son of God, son of the highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign of the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary got inquisitive. She said, how shall this be? I know not a man. See, a lot of times we try to figure God out. You're never going to figure God out. His ways are above our ways as heaven and above the earth. You're never going to figure God out. You're never going to figure out he, what, what, he's, what he's doing. But he's got a purpose behind everything he does. Whatever he asks of you, whatever he takes you through, whatever, whatever he, wherever he moves you to, you got to trust him and say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. And, and she, he, the angel of the Lord said, the Holy Ghost is going to come on you, and the power of the high shall overshadow you. And therefore, that also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And in verse 38, and Mary said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to the word, and the angel of the Lord departed from her. She said, be it unto me according to your word. The angel said, you've been blessed. You're highly favored. You're graced. The grace that sets you apart. Sometimes you can't win. You can't take credit for. It's a grace that only God can give. I want to talk about your blessed and highly favored. The word never addresses the obvious. When God gives you a word, it's going to take faith because the word never addresses the obvious. It never comes to tell you that which you already know. The word comes to reveal something in your life. The will require faith. Mary was just a common village young woman. She, she was just going about her average routine life and all of a sudden the angel of God appears to her and says, Mary, you're blessed and highly favored. And you're going to conceive a child. And she begins to ponder within herself. And she begins to think, how can this happen? I don't know a man. And it blows her mind. Say, God will blow your mind sometimes. She said, how can these things be? I don't know a man. And he, she, he said, the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. And this, that child is going to be conceived through the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says in Genesis, the seed of a woman shall crush the serpent's head. See, man's seed was tainted from the found, uh, founding of uh, Father Adam all down through the bloodline. Man's seed was tainted because of the sin of Adam. So man's seed could not be involved. But he said, I'm going to crush the serpent's head. How many know that God is always on top of things? He knew that Adam was going to fail. He knew that man was going to fail even through the Levitical priesthood, through the prophets, the minor, the major prophets, all down through, all down through the Malachi to the last verse until the 400 years of silence, of darkness during the intertestament period where God even stopped speaking to humanity. There was no word from God. There was no revelation from God. But there was promises in the Old Testament. Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child, 
And his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted, God is with us. God was going to step down and become man and take on the rags of flesh and blood and take on our carnality to give us the power to, to live a righteous, holy, pure life, to be a, a redeemed from our sin by becoming a man. It was God's plan all along, behold, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. The word will contradict your circumstances. It comes to weak people and says you're strong. It comes to contradiction to your circumstance and how you see yourself. Whenever the word comes, faith has to come right behind it. God will give you a word that doesn't make sense in the natural. It will blow your mind, a kind of word that only he can bring to pass and make it happen. Mary said, well, I, I, how can this happen? How can this be? I don't understand God. Is the game rule uh, begin to give her this word? I don't need faith to know I'm a man or how old I am. I need faith to know what I need faith to know. Somebody shout amen. What I don't know. And without faith, I won't be able to receive the word of God. we got to be able to receive the word of God in our life. How do we receive the word of God? Receiving the unobvious, receiving the abstract, receiving the ridiculous. The angel came to challenge her circumstances and tell her, you, you're not with child, but you're going to be with child, and you're going to conceive a child without knowing a man. You know what? Today, in the hour we live in, the miraculous conception, the virgin birth, there, most churches and a lot of clergy and a lot of preachers and a lot of pastors, they don't even believe it themselves. In the contemporary day that we live in. They wouldn't even preach the miraculous virgin. I uh, mean the conception of God's son. As the virgin Mary. Was, um, had the seed of the Holy Ghost. And brought forth Jesus. Because it, it doesn't make sense to them. And they can't explain it. Lord, help me to preach this, Lord. Help me to preach. See, right now you're highly favored. And she said, you're going to bring forth a son, and his name's going to be called Jesus. But she said, I don't even feel pregnant. I don't feel any physical signs I'm pregnant. And the angel says, that's what I came to tell you. There won't be any signs. There won't be any sounds. There won't be any witness. But I'm telling you it. To bring it to pass. In fact, that's how you know God did it. When there's no evidence but his word. Come on, somebody. And she struggled to receive that word. How can these things be, seeing I know not a man? That's our biggest problem, receiving God's word. We seem to be hooked on validation of man. If man don't say it to us, then we're not going to believe it. If it's not something feasible, if it's not something we can prove in science, if it's not something that we can intellectually prove, if it's not something that we, that, that we can put our hands on, see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the tangibility of God's word not even manifest yet because that's what faith is. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and there's no evidence but his word. And she struggles with it. She says, I don't know a man. And the biggest problem is receiving God's word. We seem to be hooked on the validation of man. And if we don't get the validation, the combination of man, we have trouble believing his word. How can I be rich when I'm poor? How can I be weak when I, uh, strong when I'm weak? How can I be head when I'm the tail? How can I be above and my situation looks beneath? How can I be overcome when everything looks like it's press me down. How can I have peace when I feel so confused? Come on somebody, I'm preaching. How can I have joy when I've been going through such depression? And the angel said, that's why I came to you. Circum your circumstances are lying to you today. 
the devil's got to believe, got you to believe something about yourself that's not true. You believe in the lie of hell when you believe the word of God. Come on, somebody. What God has spoken over you. He said, I've spoken good things over you and not evil. Thoughts of peace, thoughts to prosper you, thoughts to give you an expected end. What did God say about you before your mother and father even held hands? What did God say before you, of you before you was even formed in your mother's womb? What did God say? He took his first look at you out of time. In eternity, God said, I'm going to put you in time. I'm going to flip you out of eternity and flip you over in time. And I'm going to tag a destiny to you. And I'm going to tag a future to you. And I'm going to tag a hope to you. And my plans for you are good. And I'm going to prosper you. And that's what I'm tagging you with. And the next thing you know, you're miraculously conceived by your two parents. And inside your mother's womb, God's already got a plan for your whole life. Because he's the ancient of days. He knows the beginning from the end and the ending from the beginning. God goes to the end of your life and he puts everything in order all the way back to your birth. I mean to the womb of your mother and he fixes it. Because he said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct your path. See God's already got a plan before you get here. God's already got a purpose before you was formed in your mother's womb. God's already got something stamped on your life. God's already got a call. God's already got your giftings. Everything that you needed to succeed in life is already inside you. Oh, my, oh I feel my help this morning. Hallelujah. But what we want to do is we want to take the wrong off ramps. We want to take the own roads in life. He said, the way of life and death I've set before you. Choose life that you may live. God said, if you acknowledge me in all my ways, uh, all my uh, ways that, that, that you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed whatever you take your hands to do. I'll give you houses you didn't build. I'll give you vineyards you didn't plant. God said, I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to give you uh, all that you need, exceedingly abundant, all above that you can even think or imagine. When you're walking with God, he will make a way out of no way. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. The angel says, that's why I came. Your conditions are not true. What you feel doesn't matter. Your flesh will not confirm it, nor your emotions will not validate it. Your friends will not collaborate it. Humanity will not condone it, but you are highly favored. And what God is getting ready to do in your life will not need a partner, a board, or a committee. He will not need a man. Come on, somebody. He will bring it to pass all by himself. He's going to do it. Through your lonely self, your empty self, your lacking self, your troubled self. He's going to do it through your situations. Don't confirm it. How can these things be sin? I know not a man. You don't need to know anybody. All you need to do is get linked up with Jesus because he's all sufficient. He's all powerful king of kings, Lord of lords. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Nothing can separate me from the love of God through Christ Jesus. And if he's graced you and he's blessed you, no man, no devil in hell is going to stop God's plans for your life. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. And right now, your life may be lying to you and showing you something that you never imagined. There may have been failures and inconsistencies and, 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 and problems throughout your life. But God's a redemptive God. He said, whatever the palmer worm and the locust and the canker worm has, has destroyed, God said, I'm going to redeem it. Come on, somebody. I, I'm going to restore unto you. Come on, somebody. The years that they have taken away from you, it'll be like you didn't lose anything when God steps in. Because God will give you back double for your trouble. How many believe it this morning? Hallelujah. God will redeem your life. Hallelujah. You say, well, I can't be redeemed, Pastor. Look at the mess my life is. Look at what life has took to me. Look at the baggage I have in my life right now. But that's God don't even care about that, church. Because he's able in one moment to take it all the way, hallelujah, and restore you back whole again. And he will if you'll listen to him. But life, a lot of times it don't make sense. What I see is not telling me what God's wanting to do. The Bible says where there's no vision, we perish. The Bible said my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. But what I see 
by faith is not what I see right now. The Bible says write the vision, make it plain and run with it. Come on somebody. Write it and make it plain. Write it upon the tablets. For it will come to pass and it will not tarry. What God is showing you, the devil will tell you it will never happen. You're never going to be happy. You're never going to be content. You're never going to be successful. You're never going to have anything. You're always going to be in a situation. Mary didn't know that what, what the great thing that God was fixing to do in her life, and it blew her mind, but she said, Be it unto me according to your word. What has God's word promised you today? What has God's word promised you today? Every promise in his word is yours. He that spared not his own son, but freely delivered him up for us all, how shall not he with him freely give you all things? All the promises of God are yea in Christ Jesus and amen. This lowly village, a uh, young lady, just an uh, 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 average person. God will take your natural and put his supernatural on it. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. He'll put his supernatural on your natural. For the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. Come on, somebody. That means your humanity Covered by his divinity, hallelujah. And I'm glad that I've been covered by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. That I'm not who I was at one time, but I've been drawn nigh to God by the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Now I have blood-bought royal privileges as a son adopted into the family of God through the blood of Jesus. I've not received the spirit of fear, but I've received the spirit of adoption by which I cry, Abba, Father. You don't need anybody else to authorize it, organize it, give you the credential, lay their hands on you, say it's going to happen, stand where you, support you. They don't need to vote for you. They don't need to believe in you. They don't have to like you. Come on, somebody. They don't have to confirm it. They don't have to support it. If God says it over your life, that's done. it's done. That settles it, praise God. It will come to pass. Gabriel said, it will will come to pass I don't know a man Gabriel don't matter I don't feel pregnant I don't feel any physical signs I, I don't have any I don't have any morning sickness don't matter Mary it's going to happen it's going to happen miraculous is going to happen you're going to conceive a child and his name is going to be Jesus Yeshua he's going to be the, the savior of the world He's going to save your people from their sins. See, we're always looking for the natural. And we can't see beyond present circumstances. And we're always scratching our head. And we're trying to figure out, what's my next move? What's my next move? But the Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord, He'll renew their strength. They shall mount up as His eagle's wings. They'll run and be not weary. They'll walk and faint not. Hallelujah. Put your trust in the Lord today. Hallelujah. He's a turnaround God. Praise the name of the Lord. He'll turn your life around when it's upside down. He'll turn you around. How many believe he can do that today? Hey, hey I'm a witness today how God can turn your life around. How that you may feel like you today that you're so broken and you're, you're so down and you're so distressed that you know what? That you'll never... Uh, 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 get out of this situation. But God's going to come and give you a word. And you grab that word and you say, Be it unto me, God, according to your word. I'm receiving. Say, I'm receiving this today. I'm receiving the word today, God. It shall come to pass by who I'm talking to. Tell your neighbor, I receive it. Hallelujah. Receive it by all by yourself, all by your lonely, broke self, by your depressed self. You have to receive it in order for it to come to pass. If Mary said, no, Gabriel, I don't want that word. I'm not going to have a miraculous conception. I'm not going to have Jesus. I'm not going to do this thing. I've already got my life laid out. I'm already betrothed to Joseph. He's in the Debaic line. He's a, he, he's, a, he's a house and lineage of the, uh, Dave, the King David. And... I am too, and we got this beautiful life planned out, and we already got we already looking at this uh, place we want to make our home, and all these things, and God just disrupts her whole life. 
I'm glad God wrote history, his story. Because if I wrote history, I would have messed all things up. Come on, somebody. History is his story. People think they have their place in history, but it's his story. Hallelujah. Because everything that happens in time, either God does it or God allows it for a reason. And if it happens to you and I, he said that I can work all things out for the good that them love, love the Lord call according to his purpose. I'll work it out for you good. Even though it don't look good right now, even though it looks bad, he said, I'm going to work it out for you. It's not about looking, looking favored. I know a lot of people that look favored and broke. Come on, somebody. It's not about looking favored. It's about being favored. I don't have to look blessed to be blessed. I don't have to dress blessed to be blessed. I don't have to act blessed to be blessed. I don't have to join the country club to be blessed. I don't have to be in the inner circle to be blessed. Come on, somebody. I don't have to be VIP seat to be blessed. I'm VIP wherever I be. Come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, go on with your blessed self. Be it unto me. I can't control how it's going to be with you, but be it unto me, God, according to your word. The word doesn't fail, give up, then I'm not going to quit. Be unto me according to your word, Lord. Ain't no sickness in the word. Ain't no giving up in the word. Come on, somebody. Be it unto me. But we got to receive his word. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. I receive it. You can't sit beside me and not get what's mine. Walk like me, talk like me, dress like me. This is not an outside job. It's an outside job. I receive it. You can't get pregnant on the outside until the word of God pricks your heart and penetrates your flesh. Come on, somebody. It goes beyond your barrier and gets down inside your belly. How many is pregnant with something today that God's put inside of you a long time ago? And God wants you to birth that thing, Hallelujah. He wants you to give birth to what he's, the dreams he's put inside of you, the giftings he's put inside you, the purpose God's put inside of you. The, the greatest disaster of, of, about humanity is all those treasures that God has put inside of you, you taking them to your grave and never releasing them on earth. That's a great tragedy. What has God put inside you today? What has God... What word has God impregnated your spirit with today that he wants you to release? And the devil's fought you all through your life trying to keep you from doing God's will and purpose for your life. He's hurt you. He's just tried to destroy you. He's tried to break your spirit. He's tried to take you down. But God's put something inside of you that keeps you getting back up. Because he gave you a word and a promise at some point in your life. He's touched you in such a way that you will not give up on it. Hallelujah. My God, I feel Jesus in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you turn back. Don't you say, I'm just going to, I'm just going to just Whatever happens to me happens. No, God's got a plan and a future and a purpose. He's put a word in you. He spoke something to you. Just go ahead and walk it out by faith and watch God take control of your life and piece it back together and bring all things together because the Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his time. How many believe that he will? Hallelujah. I mean, they're like beautiful right now, but how many believe that he will make all things beautiful in his time? That, that's, a, that's something you've got to take by faith. Because what you see right now with your physical eyes is lying to you. But the word of God is saying the, the exact opposite to you. Being unto me according to your word. All hell gets nervous when you talk like that. When you say, be it unto me, God, according to your word. 
The moment Mary received the word of God, it totally disrupted her life. You know what she had to do? She had to go tell Joseph, her husband, she was betrothed to and engaged to, that she was pregnant. And when she went and told Joseph, the Bible says he wanted to put her away privately. It blew Joseph's mind. This woman I love, this woman I've given my life and devoted my life for, she's pregnant. How can I deal with this kind of situation? But he didn't want to expose her. But what he did, he said, I'll just put her away privately. And she went to tell him those, that news. And when she, when she told him that, it blew his mind. But the angel of the Lord told Joseph these words. He said, Joseph, the power of God has overshadowed Mary. And that thing that's, that she's conceived is the holy child. And Joseph received that word too. How many know that God will make everything fall in your in line if you'll just put him first? Somebody believe that this morning. Hallelujah. God is a God of timing. He does everything at the right time. He knows when he knows how. He knows who. My God, I feel his Lord. If she had not six months earlier, I mean, if the angel had come earlier, it would have messed all things up. But God had, the Bible says in Galatians, I read that first. In the fullness of time, God brought forth his son born of a woman. So with this, as I begin to close this message this morning, at this stage in life, you can't waste another year waiting on man's commendation. Waiting on man uh, to give you their commendation. You got to believe God's word for yourself. In spite of all the circumstances you're facing in life, you got to allow God to do a work in you. But now that Mary's received this word, she's got to begin to walk out this word. You just can't get a word and stop there. You got to walk it out. You got to see it materialize. You got to see it develop. You got to see it come to pass. So you thought what you got for Christmas was under the tree, the greatest gift hung on the tree. Somebody say amen. I'm dreaming of a Christ Christmas. <laughs> when you get a word, you might not see anything. You just got to walk till it works. She's walking around Joseph. He's not half speaking to her, talking to lawyers and say, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. He rolls his eyes out of her, at her and she says, the Holy Ghost done told me everything's going to be all right. Say, it's going to be all right, praise God. Joseph said, I might have got a little bit too hasty. But he, he believed the word of the Lord. He confessed the word of the Lord. But Mary walked this whole thing out. She trusted the word that Gabriel brought to her. But she walked it. And this is what he did restore that trust. A few people don't understand in order to restore trust. Joseph, you can't just say right. You have, you have to do right. You have to be consistent because consistency builds trust. If you're consistent, they will give you the promotion. God will open the door. Come on, somebody. Have me believe it today. So he took his pregnant girlfriend. I said he took his pregnant girlfriend. They wasn't even married yet. He took his pregnant girlfriend that was pregnant with something he didn't even understand. And put her on her donkey. And she's riding pregnant on a donkey. That is a relationship that's freshly restored. And there he takes his pregnant girlfriend through the desert. How is that highly favored? If they don't get married soon, if the child don't act right soon, they'll hop off the horse. But sometimes fate's got to ride it out. How many believe you've got to ride things out sometimes? 
faith that says, though he slay me, I'm going to trust in him. So you got to ride it out. The storm's going to keep on raging in your life, but you got to buckle up and get a grip on yourself and ride it out. And Mary and Joseph trusted in the Lord all the way through the whole situation. They trusted in God. They, he took Mary on an 80 mile ride through the desert to get to Bethlehem, the city of David, to where she was going to give birth to Jesus. Because that's the place the Bible says that he would be born. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. And they got all the way to Bethlehem. Just looking for a place of comfort. Worn out from a journey. Worn out from the long ride. And they knocked on the door of the inn expecting to get a nice place for Jesus to be born. In the place he should have been received, he was rejected. And there's no rejection like the rejection when you need something. Come on, somebody. If you ever needed something... I mean, really need it and got rejected. I know what it is to need something to get rejected. There's been times I would sit along and cry because I was rejected. And it told me, maybe you're, you ain't enough. Every door he knocked on, he went down through the city knocking on every door. They said, we have no room for you. We have no room for you. We have no room for you. Surely God would provide a place for this child to be born. Surely God has set some things up to, that we could, we could have a, a, a decent place for the birth of our son. But the Bible says there was no room for Jesus in the end. They could not find a place. Maybe you ain't enough. Every door knocked on. There was no room. We have no room for you. Joseph would take Mary and saddle her back on a donkey and said, we're going to find a place. We're going to find a place. Just hold on. Just hold on. So you ever been to that place where you're going to this and that, trying to find a place for yourself, trying to find where you fit in life, trying to find, trying to find a place for you to go in, 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 in the comforts of, of that place, feel peace about it. But there's no room. I'm going to tell you what it feels like to be a man in the family in crisis. You can't deliver what it is to go back home and, and look at need and can't produce the pressure that comes on your heart when you're running out of time. Joseph was running out of time. He couldn't find a place for her. He was looking so hard to find a place for her, but he couldn't find anywhere for her. And finally he got to a place where where he told Mary, I'm out of ideas, out of hotels. I see a little barn over here. That's where we're going to have to go, bed down for the night and, get, and give birth to this child. See, see, sometimes circumstances and situations may not look good for us, but God will take that humble beginning of your life and he will do something great because he's put a word inside of you. How many believe that this morning? Hallelujah. How could God give me a king and not birth him in a castle? What is God telling us about greatness? What he's telling us about grace, he chooses to birth greatness. We're looking for greatness in all these high places. But when God chooses to birth greatness, he will start in the menial backwoods, overlooked, ignored, unsanitary circumstances. How could you bring something? That's a miracle right there. That wasn't even working. And when I get to the birth of Christ, this shows up. Tell me God's not real. <laughs> how, how can you say that God's not real? Right when I get to the message of the birth of Christ and the stable pops up on a manger scene pops up on the screen. Uh, you know, you know, he's he's an almighty God this morning, don't you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But she gives birth to, to this miracle in a manger. 
There's no clean towels. All he could find was swaddling clothes, or we know them as milk rags that they would use to milk the cow. And they got those milk rags and they wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and they laid him in a manger. Who would imagine the king born in a manger? He didn't come as king. He was right where he was supposed to be. He came as a lamb. And a lamb is born in an animal trough. How about that? Now the whole, this precious lamb of God were the cows and the horses and the donkeys. None moved out of their stall because the animals knew the creator was before them. But he also was a lamb born in a manger where things are born to be sacrificed. Then she birthed that thing that would one day birth her. She delivered the thing that one day would deliver her. She pushed out a baby that one day would push her out of her sin. Come on, somebody. She nursed the child that would nurse her. She held the one that would hold her. She blessed the one that would bless her. You see, the reason the devil don't want you to birth what God has in you, because as soon as you get through birthing, it's going to birth you everything you'll ever need. It isn't the Christmas story about room. It isn't all about room, the rejection about room. His gift was about how to handle a woman that was pregnant in a way he didn't know how to handle. Didn't the innkeeper say they had no room? And once she'd give birth to the Christ, did it not make room for her? My question for you, where have you carried on the inside of you that would answer prayer? You've been praying. The prayer you've been praying would will on be answer you release the promise you've been carrying. What has God put on inside of you that he was wanting you to give birth to that's been inside of you for so long? And you said, God, I don't know if I can receive this word or not. What has God showed you many years ago that he wants to do through your life? enemy did all he could this past year to take us all down, to kill us all. But let me know he's a liar. Hallelujah. Just remember this. That God's going to bring it to pass. Whatever God spoke to you through his word, he's going to bring it to pass. And this humble manger scene that God just so miraculously put back on our projector that was a day of small beginnings in the eyes of man. But this child laying in the manger, this lamb, was one day going to be king of the world, king of kings and lord of lords. With every head bowed, every eye closed today, what has God spoken to your life that what you see is lying to you? Is trying to tell you that your circumstances don't match what God has promised. That what God has told you is never going to come to pass. How many is tired of getting up every day and that same thing be blaring back in your face? And you say, God, I need to move out of here. This is not who I am and it's not who you told me I would be. So I want you to say today as Mary said, Lord, I receive your word. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word today. I receive that word into my life, God. And I'm going to walk it out by faith. I'm going to trust in you, God, that my best days are ahead of me. That the greatest days of my life are still in front of me. I've heard so many people tell me, Look what I've done. Look the mistakes I've made. Look at what I've created, the chaos, the problems, the situations I did myself. And they give up at that point, and they never pick themselves back up. Pick yourself back up and put yourself up on that donkey and just ride on in faith. There's going to be a place for you to give birth to your giftings and your callings. And it might not look like the place you've imagined. 
Mary would have never thought that she was going to give birth in a lowly manger to the, the God incarnate. It didn't look like a place for a king. You may, you may say, well, my gifts are great, God. Look, 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 look what, Lord, those talents you give me. And, and, and look, God, where you placed me. And God said, look at my son where he was born at. And where God's going to birth the greatest things in your life, may it look at polar opposite from where you imagined it would be. But be it unto me according to your word, God. Be it unto me according to your word. If you're here this morning and you want to make your Christmas the greatest Christmas you've ever experienced, you better put that babe in the middle of Christmas. It's not about Christmas tree and presents. It's, it's not about all, all those things. But Jesus is the reason for the season. Is there room for Jesus in your life? Or back like it was back then, there was no room for Jesus in the inn. It's about the same way that it is today. In the end, in the E-N-D, there's no room for Jesus in our life. So while we Sit here for just one moment. If you want to come to the altar, if you need prayer for anything in your life, if you just want to come say, Lord, during this Christmas season, God, I don't have gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I, 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 I don't have anything, God, monetary. But what I do have is myself. And God, I'm going to give you me today. I'm going to put myself on the altar. Paul said, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you, that you present yourself a holy, acceptable sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable and due service. And so, God, I'm going to lay myself on the altar today, and I'm giving you everything, God. I'm giving you my talents, my giftings, my callings. I'm giving you everything, God. Look how broke, look how messed up I am, God. Look at this situation. But God said, I give you a word of hope this morning. I give you a word of hope. Behold, a child is born in the city of David, and he shall be the Savior of this world. He'll redeem your life. He'll redeem your life. Everything that you think is broken in your life, you've got to fix it. He'll redeem, it. He'll redeem it. Don't let the devil tell you another lie. God's a redemptive God. You would not still be sitting here breathing in this house if God would not did not have still have a plan for you. He, he wouldn't be here, but he does. He loves you this morning. So if you if you feel led at this time, I'm just going to give everybody just one second in the house. You may be watching by a live stream. If you want to give everything to Jesus today, give it to him. Say, Lord. I just bring you what I have today, God. It's, not, it's, it's not much, God. It may not be anything. But I'm giving you myself, God. From this moment forward, as I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Will you dedicate yourself to God today? And say, Lord, my gift is myself. My gift is myself. I give you myself. glorify you God magnify you in all the earth quit running from God quit 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 getting in getting out look if you'll just submit yourself to God submission is a hard thing but submission is a hard thing but but the Bible says submit yourself to God it's our it's our reasonable and due service to totally sacrifice ourselves for him he totally sacrificed himself for you. So I'm praying today, Lord, God, during this Christmas season, if we learned anything today or in this service, God, that we'll believe whatever you've spoken over us, God. We don't have to have validation and recommendation and com commendation of man because, God, you will do it, Lord. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. The Bible says that he that begun a good work in you, he will finish it. 
He's watching over what he started in your life, and he said he'll finish it. He'll finish it. You won't finish it. He'll finish it. He'll take you through. He'll bring, he'll bring you out. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You finished your course. Just keep on keeping on for the Lord. Heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my word, my word is going to remain the same from this day to this age, from everlasting to everlasting. Thy word is forever established in heaven, O Lord. God, I thank you today for your people. Thank you for those who've gathered here in this house of worship. Thank you for those who have watched live stream. God, I thank you for... Christmas miracles that are happening right now, God, in people's lives, in people's homes, in people's bodies. God, I pray if there be one here sick or one watching live stream, they're sick, suffering. You've had COVID, you've had uh, pneumonia, you've had lung issues, but I pray right now in Jesus' name, your lungs be made whole and you will not have any more issues with them in Jesus' name. And whoever I'm speaking to, I want you to send me a message inbox and tell me you could you received a miracle in your body in Jesus' name. I want you to tell me. I want you to send me an inbox. And it, and it, whatever physical ailments you have in your body right now, whatever healing you need in your body, by his stripes we are healed. And I pray healing over you. But the most important thing I speak today is the condition of your soul. Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you blood bought? Are you redeemed by the blood of Jesus? If you're not saved this morning, if you're backslid on God, say, Father, forgive me, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. I'm lost and undone, God. I've, I've rebe- I've, uh, I'm in rebellion against you, God. I'm, I've strayed from you, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me in your blood, Jesus. With my mouth I confess that Jesus is Lord in my heart. I believe that God has raised him from the dead. Save my soul, Lord. I want to be born again. Come into my heart right now, Lord. And do that miraculous work that only you can do. I receive it right now, Father. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us today appreciate you watching by live feed I hope each and every one of you have a very merry Christmas <laughs> Christmas and we'll see you next week God bless you